welcome friends my name is avinash gorakshikar and i welcome all of you to another episodes of kanaksya high flyers uh, friends in this uh, uh, kind of episodes we introduce you emerging corporates you know and describe about their uh, business models their growth plans and how they can reward you know uh, public shareholders and today uh, we have a very interesting company by the name of krishka strapping solutions limited and we have the privilege of having the top management that is the chairman and managing director of the company mr balamani kandar uh, mr bala welcome to the show and thank you very much for sparing your valuable time with us today good morning mr avinash uh, thank you very much for having us uh, in this discussion today you know we are uh, very excited to uh, discuss about our company and its uh, future plans to our future shareholders and investors uh, we are this uh, discussion okay so mr bala my first question to you is that if you could share with us you know how did you uh, get into this business a little a uh, bit about your business journey and currently you know what is the positioning of the company in the overall market something about your company's business model if you can add some color on all these points yeah uh, sure sir uh, this uh, journey started in 2017 when i was working in the uk so uh, even though i really enjoyed my time in the uk i really wanted to come back to india i was analyzing uh, various uh, business uh, opportunities uh, in the manufacturing sector that's how i found this a very interesting product called uh, steel strapping uh, during our market research we found that uh, there were only three other manufacturers uh, in uh, indian uh, strapping market at that time so the entire steel industry you know was scattered by these three players so we thought there is a good gap in the market uh, so we decided to invest in this uh, project by the end of 2017 i moved back to india from uk uh, 2017 december we did the name registration for our company krishka strapping solutions uh, private limited in 2018 and 19 you know we were uh, doing extensive market research and we were designing uh, our own production line and we were uh, putting together a good team to you know uh, run this uh, company by end of 2019 we started the installation uh, of the machinery uh, by march 2020 we taken our first commercial production what happened you know uh, within few days uh, after our uh, first commercial production uh, the covid lockdown was uh, announced so the first year uh, we uh, gone through so many uh, different challenges you know whatever a company can imagine uh, within the first year itself uh, we have gone through that uh, kind of uh, difficulties so uh, and uh, to answer the second part of your question regarding the business model see the, our business model is very simple and uh, straightforward you know there is a huge market for uh, steel strapping in the indian steel industry at first uh, we wanted to establish our company as a, a reliable uh, strapping supplier and uh, uh, we want to uh, um, you know uh, approve our product at all the steel mills so the first two years till now we are uh, really focused on uh, uh, you know entering into all the steel mills as a supplier and uh, from this point onwards uh, we are uh, going to focus uh, mainly on the packaging contracts uh, in the steel industry what happens uh, uh, right now most of the steel mills are outsourcing their entire packaging uh, to the packaging contractors the packaging contractors uh, they will uh, deploy the manpower they will uh, put their own tools and accessories to do the packing and they use the strapping uh, being the biggest uh, strapping uh, packaging consumable apart from that they also use some other items so now we are uh, putting together a team to focus uh, mainly on the packaging contracts and to talk about our market share uh, right now we hold about a uh, 7 to 8 percentage of the strapping market share okay uh, mr bala now my second question is you know overall uh, you know since you have now entered the strapping solution market if you could tell us you know uh, basically what is the kind of opportunity of growth you see in the next say 2 to 3 years because uh, you know this is a large market uh, and you have managed to you know gain a market share of about 6 7% so over the next say 2 to 3 years looking at the current you know developments in the industry now post covid what is your sense how big is this industry and what is the company strategy to increase its market share uh, it's uh, you know its customer base here if, so if you could you know tell us something on this yeah sure um from our estimates the market share for steel strapping uh, would be about a uh, 1500 crores per annum but if we include the uh, packing contracts and the packing automation done on the packing lines uh, the market size would be about a uh, 3500 to 4000 crores uh, per annum so okay. to increase the market share we right now have uh, two uh, strategies 
one is uh, we are uh, putting up a new uh, strapping line uh, from the ipo funds so this uh, new strapping line uh, will eventually double our uh, production capacity right now we have about a uh, 1500 tons per month capacity the new line will add another 1500 tons uh, capacity the thing is from this new line we can able to produce uh, ultra high tensile steel strapping which is a new grade of strapping this grade uh, uh, approximately have almost 35 percentage of market share in india so once we start uh, producing this new grade from uh, hopefully q3 of next financial year uh, you know we can enter into the uh, new market as well and apart from entering into the new market uh, from our current sub customers we are trying to enter into packing contract segment so what happens uh, currently our customers some customers they buy strapping themselves and they do packing themselves and uh, in some places they are given the entire packing to the packing contractors okay uh, since now we are entering into that new packing contract segment we are hopeful that we can increase our market share from our current customers and there are other set of packing uh, st- steel mills they don't uh, buy strapping themselves they entirely outsource the uh, packaging to the packing contractors so that is also one area once we enter we can uh, generate more volume from that area as well okay uh in fact uh, nicely uh, mentioned mr bala now tell me uh, mr bala as of financial year fy22 and uh, you know the latest 6 uh, months if you could give us some idea you know uh, about uh, what kind of revenue what kind of profit the company has generated and uh, in your sense you know since we are now already in the month of march uh, you know what is your assessment of next year that is fy24 how does it look for you uh, since you you know must be talking to your customers you know must be talking to a lot of you know sales guys so obviously you obviously have a better idea of what is the feel factor on ground so if you could tell us you know all this uh, briefly to our viewers yeah sure mr avanash see till uh, march uh, 31st uh, 22 uh, we uh, achieved a revenue of 18.7 crores uh, with a ebitda of 17% and the pat of uh, 8% and uh, yesterday is most at worst uh, so we can say we have closed this uh, financial year with uh, 72.3 crores of revenue the ebitda will be about uh, um, 718% with a pat of okay. 13 to 15% okay so moving forward in the uh, next financial year uh, we are very much positive that uh, we will cross 100 crores uh, due to the our uh, uh, plans to enter into packing contracts and our upcoming uh, uh, production line we are very positive that we will cross 100 crores okay uh, mr bala i think if you look at the year financial year fy23 which you know is now going to end soon and obviously uh, compared to previous year there's been a big jump in your revenue you know from 18 crores it has shot up to 75 crores now can you tell us what have been the main reasons for this uh, you know sharp top line growth you know because this is very interesting you know such a strong top line growth is definitely quite commendable so if you could share with us what have been the main reasons for this you know excellent growth which you have recorded yeah sure mr avinash uh, uh, there are two major reasons for this one is the i would say the nature of the industry the thing is steel strapping is a very safety critical uh, commodity uh, uh, you know all the steel mills give utmost importance to their packing uh, safety of the packing so uh, as a packing uh, steel strapping supplier Uh, first we undergone a very uh, stringent uh, demo and trial process to you know get our product approved by the steel mills uh, and establish ourselves as a supplier and uh, most of the strapping supplies are you know given in tenders so the tenders ranges from 6 months to 5 years so before uh, uh, getting approval of our product we were not eligible to participate in the tenders so what happened in the financial year 21 22 we were you know uh, getting a product approved by the steel mills one by one uh, and in the last financial year uh, 22 23 uh, you know we were eligible to participate in tenders so because of the, the this uh, approval process uh, uh, there was not much uh, uh, you know scope to increase our revenue in the financial year 21 22 so that is one of the reason and the other major reason i would say is because of the covid lockdown you know we were not uh, given enough opportunity to establish ourselves as a supplier in the first two financial years so whatever this forex growth we have shown is uh, mainly the you know pent the, the pent up growth happened in the financial year that would say okay okay 
Now, Mr. Balak, if you could tell us, you know, what is the kind of competitive landscape? You mentioned that there are hardly two, three players which operate in this product. So now, currently, what is the scenario? Along with you, you know, who would be uh, some more comparable players? You know, because uh, obviously competition is present in every sector. But then now, how are we placed? Do we have the same three to four players, or some other additional capacities are also coming up apart from you know our capacity, which is already present in the market? uh from what i know there is no other uh, new company uh, entering this field uh, currently and uh, i don't see any expansion in our uh, competitor uh, as well so uh, to talk about our competitor uh, like i said there are three uh, other players and uh, uh, the one company is called uh, signod india so they are the first mover they entered the indian market about 40 years back so they are a us company so okay. still they currently holds about 40% market share the other major competitor is called uh, grip strapping uh, they are again uh, uh, a german based uh, mnc uh, they are the in the second uh, uh, place in terms of market share okay uh, mr bala now tell me one thing you know we have generated a good amount of interest from customers managed a market share of 6 7% now what are the key competitive kind of you know advantages which according to you uh, krishka strappings has built in the market like you know what have been the special uh, qualities of your company vis a vis other competitors you know both on uh, the qualitative side as well as the quantitative side so if you could give us something to uh, you know understand how special is krishka in the market considering the kind of work you have done for the company till now yeah sure sir you know at krishka uh, our major focus is on the uh, cost effectiveness of the product in the past two years what we have done is we have done uh, so much r and d uh, in our production line so we have developed uh, various uh, alternate grades of steel strapping which uses uh, cost effective raw materials which are different from the typical uh, traditional raw material used by our uh, competitors uh, so uh, by end of the day you know we are uh, giving a cost effective product uh, which is uh, giving cost saving to our customers without affecting our clients so our uh, this uh, approach on uh, uh, r&d and uh, innovation uh, you know which is uh, uh, differentiate uh, from our uh, competitors okay uh, mr bala what is the normal working capital cycle in our business like typically you know how many months does your customer pay normally how much inventory do you stock up and most importantly you know if you take the overall cost uh, kind of uh, break up like you know uh, the main cost break up i believe is it the raw material break up and then employee cost if you could give us some broad idea about you know for every rupee generated you know what is the main cost which you incur so if you could give some uh, you know data points on this yeah uh, sure uh, see currently our average working capital cycle is about 90 days which is uh, the the date of uh, we pay advance to our uh, raw material supplier till we release the funds from our customers the uh, credit paid the normal payment cycle is about uh, 45 days credit uh, to the steel mills we are offering thing is uh, the steel strapping as a product you know it comes in uh, five different uh, widths and uh, several different thickness ranges and also we have about uh, four different grades of strapping in each and every size so when we put together this combination different width thickness and grades so we always have some 30 to 40 fast running sizes so we have to have some minimum inventory level in each and every size so that we we can supply to our customer uh, immediately so this is the one uh, element in the industry which we cannot avoid so okay. we always have some 30 to 35 days of uh, inventory at our factory any point of time and uh, what is the uh, next part of the question can you say i was asking you that out of every rupee generated what is the main cost is it raw material is it employee cost is it power cost if you can give us some idea about you know the broad cost break up you know the main cost break up which actually company incurs you know to generate every rupee of uh, revenue so the major cost uh, uh, of the product is the raw material i would say uh, roughly uh, 70 to 75% of the cost is the steel uh, coil which we are using as a raw material yeah the uh, employee cost uh, and the production cost is very minimal the employee cost is about uh, 3% and the production okay. cost is about uh, 3 to 4% okay so main is the raw material cost pala right yes now tell me one thing uh, just to now take a little more extension to this question like normally do you have some established uh, suppliers for your steel requirements you know uh, or you have a ongoing basis like whichever is the most competitive you buy steel uh, you know your raw material from them is there a kind of a, a contract arrangement with them or do you buy it as and when you see the prices are competitive 
So we do uh, have a uh, several uh, number of suppliers. Right now we have about six to seven different uh, suppliers for our steel uh, strapping. And with some uh, suppliers we have a quarterly contract. And with some suppliers we have halfly contract. And with some suppliers uh, we have a monthly based on the current uh, uh, spot prices we buy. The thing is, uh, steel uh, is uh, now the past two years uh, it uh, fluctuating a lot. So if we only depend on the spot prices, uh, it will be difficult to run the show. So okay. in order to protect our company uh, from the uh, fluctuations in the pricing, so we have a uh, different set of uh, uh, suppliers, and also like I said, uh, we developed so many different grades to produce the similar uh, grade of uh, steel strapping. So even if there's a price rise in a particular grade, we can always go to some other grades to protect our purchase uh, card. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Bala, one more thing which uh, is very interesting and very positive about uh, your company is that you know EBITDA margins are really quite attractive at 17-18 percent. You know, for a product like yours, which is largely a B2B product. Now, tell us one thing that what is your assessment? Can we, uh, you know, expect that these margins can at least be maintained going forward? Because you know, having 17-18 percent margin, you will also agree that these are definitely very good margins for a product like uh, a B2B product. So, you know, for your assessment, can we expect that next couple of years, you know, hopefully, if steel prices remain competitive, a uh, little softer going ahead, because we hear commodity prices are now coming down. So, will that help you to not only sustain, but you know, improve your uh, EBITDA margins a, a little bit if all this happens? Uh, sure. Uh, thing is, uh, right now we are producing about 800 tons of uh, steel strapping uh, uh, in a month, and now we are putting up a new production line. The thing is, if we increase our uh, sales uh, uh, each and every month, uh, you know, our purchase uh, uh, power also gets stronger. So we can negotiate a little bit better with our suppliers. So as we increase the uh, volume of uh, uh, purchase from our suppliers, definitely we can get additional some uh, two to three percent of uh, margin. And uh, apart from that, we are a new uh, supplier in the industry. It's been just uh, two and a half years since we established ourselves as a supplier. So in order to gain the market share, you know, we entered uh, the contracts orders with a better attractive pricing uh, so that we can okay. get an in. Okay. So as we, you know, uh, move forward uh, in the future, definitely uh, we would get a better margins from our existing customers as well. Okay, but uh, now one more question, which is interlinked to this, Mr. Bala, is that with your customers, normally is it a dynamic kind of pricing model or is it a fixed pricing model? I just wanted to ask you because. In case you know steel prices go up and you have decided to supply to some customer, now is it uh, based on a fixed pricing model or basically there is a element for some price increase, you know, to cover up at least your metal cost or your material cost? So you know, is this uh, something which is already there in your contracts? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, in the in this industry, almost 80 to 90 percent of the orders are linked with the uh, uh, steel pricing. Uh, okay. The orders we are I'm having it ranges from six months to even five year long term orders we are having. All the okay. orders are based on the rise in steel price. If there is a increase or decrease in the prices, it will be uh, you know accounted uh, in the uh, selling price. Okay, fine. And uh, Mr. Bala, what is the total debt, long term, short term, currently on the books of the company? If you could tell us this uh, number. Yeah, sure. Uh, right now we are having about a seven point two five crores of working capital limits. And apart from that, uh, we have uh, 1.5 crores of uh, dam loan, which we got during COVID uh, as part of the government's uh, uh, relief. And uh, moving forward, uh, uh, we will continue to have working capital limits. I don't uh, uh, foresee any uh, term loans or uh, uh, other debts uh, we would uh, take in the future. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Bala, tell us something about your uh, oncoming uh, IPO. You know, what is the total sum you are planning to raise? What is the objective? If you could give us some color on this. Yeah, sure. Uh, we uh, plan to raise up, uh, about 18 to 19 crores uh, from this IPO. The entire issue is a uh, uh, full of fresh issue. There is no offer for sale involved. And the major objective of this IPO is uh, uh, we are setting up a new production line. Most of the funds will be used for this uh, new upcoming production line. And uh, also we are uh, pre-closing some 3.75 crores of uh, loan uh, from this IPO proceeds. Okay. And uh, uh, in fact, one more thing which you know is very much interesting is that you all have been a very new player but still have managed to grab a decent market share in the market. So, you know, you said your quality is one parameter, then execution is one parameter. Now, tell me one thing, uh, Mr. Bala, in our business, 
you know if you leave out covid what is the single most risk factor in our business because you know as you agree every business you know carries a certain element of risk so you know in your sense what is the kind of unknown risk which can happen in case things go wrong i mean uh, they should not go wrong for you and secondly yeah. you know what is the risk mitigation strategy which your company has developed like if there is a problem or a risk then how have you managed to create risk management systems at your end so that you know you can cover up and you know take these challenges very strongly and move forward yeah it's a very interesting question you know uh, the, the major uh, single important risk in this industry is the fluctuation is in the raw metal pricing uh, like i already explained uh, to mitigate this risk uh, we have developed uh, several different uh, new suppliers and we are also adopting this uh, policy of you know developing alternate grades which are uh, different and the cost effective than the uh, traditional grades used in the industry so by diversifying our uh, supplier base and also diversifying our uh, raw material grades uh, we are uh, very much protected from this uh, fluctuations in the spot pricing and also like i said uh, we have a uh, quarterly contract with suppliers uh, half yearly contract with suppliers even there is a sudden spike in the spot price in this month we of course have a long term contract with our supplier they will be continue to supply at a cheaper rate because the contract is 6 months so like like this uh, uh, by diversifying our supplier base we are much protected from this uh, risk and uh, apart from this general risk in the industry uh, i would say the major risk in the strapping industry the you know how we manage our operation and the production cost so from day one uh, we designed krishka to be the most effective uh, uh, cost effective manufacturer of steel strapping we own the uh, latest uh, uh, production line in, in india which is the most energy efficient production line and it is fully automated from start to end so the amount of employees required to run this line is almost uh, 50% when i compared with our uh, peers so okay. we do have the lowest uh, employee cost per ton in industry we do have the lowest uh, production cost from, uh, from the industry so you know our approach on cost effectiveness uh, uh, definitely would uh, uh, eliminate this risk of you know uh, overrunning the cost no fine i think very well articulated uh, mr bala now my last question to you is uh, you know what is the kind of uh, reward or what is the kind of uh, you know promise which you would like to make to your incoming you know retail investors who would participate in your ipo just uh, you know from a long term perspective because equity is all about growth so you know how uh, confident are you of sharing your growth with the investors over the next six, six, say so to two to three years if you can you know just uh, put your thoughts here that would be really be great yeah sure sir uh, see i want to put it this way uh, see the we are uh, as a steel strapping uh, manufacturer and supplier we are largely catering to the indian steel industry so if we look at the indian steel industry it is expected to be doubled in the next 10 years right now the indian steel industry is producing about 120 million tons of steel uh, per annum and uh, by all analyst uh, estimates uh, it is going to cross uh, 300 million tons of uh, Uh, steel production per annum by 2035 so which is roughly 8 to 12% uh, year on year growth for the next 15 years and apart from that an uh, indian government is also uh, you know uh, pushing uh, so much on the infrastructure uh, and if you look at the export uh, market uh, china is the world's biggest steel producer they are uh, abo- producing about uh, 800 million tons of trapping i mean steel which is uh, almost seven times uh, more steel than indian uh, uh, industry so on the one hand china is uh, cutting down the steel production citing uh, environmental and pollution uh, reasons on the other hand uh, in the post covid era uh, almost all the major countries in the world are adapting to the china plus one policy so even though chinese steel is cheaper they want to have one more supplier uh, which is a non chinese uh, entity so this change in dynamics uh, present an excellent opportunity for the indian steel industry as a whole you know as a uh, steel strapping supplier our company is well positioned in this market to capitalize on this uh, you know impressive uh, growth we are going to experience so uh, to all my future shareholders and uh, investors i can say that uh, we have a very solid uh, growth plan uh, moving forward in the next uh, 5 to 10 years definitely uh, whoever is investing in our company uh, would uh, see a great uh, capital appreciation anyway i think uh, thank you very much mr wala for sparing your valuable time today and my best wishes to you and your entire management team thank you and uh, viewers you. if you like the video please like and share it with everybody